Welcome to Pentecost Sunday at the Dunce Corners Church. Pentecost is a day when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, it says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The last dance, a chronicle of the 1998 Chicago Bulls and a certain Nike shoe tying, rafter flying, gravity defying superstar nicknamed Air Jordan has been providing viewing entertainment for millions of people stuck at home during the coronavirus. Being technologically challenged, I get the wrong channel or the wrong time, and no matter how hard I try, I miss every episode. I went online to get caught up. I googled Michael Jordan. Instead of the last dance, an old commercial popped up. It turns out Michael Jordan is not the only one fond of the air. There was a beloved hero for the Boston Celtics named Bird, <laughs> Larry Bird. Larry Legend is shooting hoops in a deserted arena. Michael walks in with his baggy shorts and a bag of food from the Golden Arches. Larry sees the bag of food. Larry smells the bag of food. Larry wants the bag of food. He says to Michael, play you for it. With a curious look, Michael responds, you and me for my Big Mac? First one to miss watches the other one eat, says the bird man. But even though Larry is a bird, he knows in one area he's outmatched, so he makes a rule with Air Jordan, no dunking. With that, the two superstars begin the most awesome game of horse you could ever imagine. Shots from behind the backboard. Soon they're firing from half court, off the glass, left-handed, on one knee, full court. And then from the upper deck of the arena, Larry Smugly says, off the floor, off the scoreboard, nothing but net. Michael's turn from outside the arena, through the window, off the wall, nothing but net. Finally, they're on top of a building in Chicago, maybe the Sears Trade Tower, that landmark that rises high above the Windy City. Anyway, one of them calls the shot over the expressway, across the river, off the billboard. The commercial fades to a satisfying end. You feel like the only way they could top that would be for Michael to break the no dunking rule with some sort of out of this world version of a space jam. Today is the day of Pentecost. Today is the day of the fulfillment of a promise Jesus made to his disciples that they would receive power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And, and on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes not only to the original apostles, but also to people who have gathered in Jerusalem from far and near. Pentecost is a clear and compelling sign that, that God's Spirit is for all people, even unto the ends of the earth. Imagine if Pentecost was God's ultimate shot in a game of horse, a game of horse which from the very beginning, God had been sending the Holy Spirit to fill his people with his presence, with his peace, and with his power. In the beginning, when the game of horse was just being invented, when the game of horse was just being created, when the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, God said, out of the chaos, under the deepest of the deep, through the darkest of the darkness, let there be light. And there was light. For six days, God practiced his shot. 
created the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry lands, life under the sea, life on the land, the birds in the air. And just when God's arm might have been getting tired from making so many amazing shots, God said, one more shot. I have one more shot for this creation story to make this story complete. Late in the evening, dusk settling, sun setting, God said one more shot. In our image, in our likeness, to rule over the fish, over the birds, over the livestock, over all the creatures that move, and bam, the shot was perfect. God created human beings in God's very own image. That first game of horse came to an end and God was thinking, that was a pretty good game if I say so myself. Pretty good? <laughs> no, that was very good. And God rested on the seventh day. That was the first game of horse. Later, God got the urge to play again. He said to Noah, watch this. Through the gopher word, up the gangplank, double dribbling with the animals that enter the ark two by two, off the neck of the giraffe, down the trunk of the elephant, rattling for 40 days as it rains on the ark, out the window, on the wings of a dove. Big, arching rainbow. Nothing but net. Hey Moses, come over to this burning bush. I'm on fire. I have something to show you and something he does. With the staff, leaping off the hind legs of the frog, lifted on the wings of the gnats, hoisted by the flies, off the livestock, off the locust, bouncing from the doorposts of that first Passover through the Red Sea and settling safely in the tambourine, Marion is ringing as she dances. Sometimes God takes pleasure in repetition. Joshua, one, watch this, around the walls of Jericho once. And again, and again, and six days, six times around the walls of Jericho. And then on the seventh day, seven times on that seventh day, sometimes God takes pleasure in repetition. Other times the action is quick and laser focused. Like David, one smooth stone loaded in a slingshot made the shot heard round the shepherd world, striking down Goliath, that mighty 10-foot center who starred for the Philistines. God is unpredictable. God knows how to mix it up. Elijah heard God was playing a game of horse out near Mount Horeb. The prophet was hanging out in his hideout near Mount Horeb, doing everything he could to hide from the wicked Queen Jezebel. God told Elijah, I'm gonna show up. Elijah stood at the mouth of the cave where he'd been hiding. The wind rushed by and Elijah waited for God to appear. With a smile, God said, not in the wind. An earthquake rattled the ground. Elijah leaned in, ready to see God. With a smile, God said, not in the earthquake. A fire raged. Elijah was certain this time it was God. With a smile, God said, not in the fire. On that day, God's perfect shot was just a still, small voice, and it was priceless. Sometimes it is like a great, big, exciting three-ring circus. Daniel was sitting in an upstairs room praying to the Lord. The king said, you can only pray to me. Daniel needed a miracle as he was arrested and hauled to judgment right during his daily prayers. What happened next is one of the truly great shots of all time. Out the window, through the fiery furnace, bouncing over the 90 foot idol that had been made, off the wall with writing on it, and straight into the lion's den. That one brought a roar from the crowd. That one brought a roar from the king. That one brought a roar from the lion, and that one brought a muffled roar from Daniel's deniers. Thrown into the den, they became dinner. As awesome and amazing as these games of horse were that filled the Old Testament, it turns out God was just warming up. With the author of Hebrews on the microphone, we hear this glorious and grand introduction. 
In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, God has spoken through his son. In the Old Testament, God was just warming up. As the time came near for Jesus to be born, God flexed his muscles and stretched his hamstrings. And God says, pay attention. You're never going to believe this. God starts dribbling the ball as he calls the shot. 42 bounces for the 42 generations from Abraham to Jesus. Off the star in the east, scaling the humps of the camels transporting the three kings, glancing off Herod's old hard head, riding on the wings of the angels out to the shepherds in the field, carried in the tomb of Mary, and finally coming to rest in the manger. God said, I call that shot Emmanuel. From now on, you can say, God is with us. But wait, there's more. Michael made his fame as Air Jordan. Jesus makes his first adult appearance at the River Jordan. Baptized in the Jordan is God's version of the dunk. Pass the ball from Isaiah to John the Baptist. Careful not to let the ball get all gummed up in the Baptist locusts and honey. Down to the banks of the River Jordan, back up to heaven. Heaven opens, the Holy Spirit descends like a dove and lands squarely on Jesus. God says, I call that one the blessing of the beloved. This is my son whom I love. With him I'm well pleased. Getting Jesus from the Jordan to Jerusalem, it taxes your tongue as you try to gather all the highlights of his life into one single shot. The lame leper, tongue speaking, eye seeking, sin forgiven, life given, heart healing, hope feeling, love spreading, drug, devil dreading, donkey riding, demons hiding, kingdom coming and victory drumming. The, the, the miracle of Jesus' life, when you condense it, it, it's just so hard to say it, but it bears witness to this that in Jesus Christ, God met every hope and every dream that we could have ever imagined. In Jerusalem, Jesus huddles with his disciples and he makes a promise to them. It, it was a promise that must have sounded so sweet to their ears. I'm going to ask the Father, he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth, I will not leave you as orphans. The counselor, the, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. And it will remind you of everything that I taught you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give it. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and neither let them be afraid. How those words that promised a counselor, a comforter, the Holy Spirit, that they must have done exactly what Jesus intended. They must have given the disciples peace. They would never be alone. They would never be orphans. Jesus would always be with them. Jesus promised, I'm going to make just that shot. It'll be the ultimate shot. But when the ultimate shot in the ultimate game of horse was launched, the hearts of those disciples were troubled. The hearts of those disciples were afraid. The hearts of those disciples were not filled with peace. The hearts of those disciples were filled with doubt, with fear, with dismay, and with a feeling of complete and utter abandonment. It looked like Jesus could not deliver the final shot. In the garden, with prayers of great distress, captured and arrested, brought to trial, convicted and condemned, hung on a cross, crowned with thorns, suffering, dying, buried in a tomb. 
that shot was a complete failure in the eyes of the disciples. Jesus, who had done everything so right, had a final shot that was so very wrong. He lost the game, he lost his life, and they lost all hope. Little did they know the game was still on. Little did they know that ball lying so lifelessly in the tomb still had a little air in it. Little did they know that, that the ball would start bouncing even in the darkness of the tomb. Little did they know that on the third day when the stone was rolled from the tomb, the shot would continue, shooting out of the tomb to the astonishment of the weeping women, appearing now to Mary, now to disheartened disciples walking on the road to Emmaus, now to Thomas dispelling his doubts, now to Peter graciously allowing the one who denied Jesus three times to affirm his love for Jesus three times. Now to all the disciples gathered in the upper room, now ascending all the way to heaven, and now on the day of Pentecost, finally on the day of Pentecost, some 50 days after the crucifixion, now the miracle came. The shot descended on them. The shot descended on all of them. It, it was glorious. If they didn't know it was coming, they, they sure woke up when they heard the blowing of the violent wind. If, if they didn't know it was coming, they set up straight as a bolt when they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire descending on them. If they didn't know it was coming, it must have surprised them when at that ultimate moment, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. That's where the ultimate shot landed. Pentecost. Pentecost proclaims so many things. Today on this day of Pentecost in the year 2020, smack dab in the middle of a virus that has isolated us in so many ways. Hear this good news. We are not alone. God sent us a counselor. God sent us a comforter. God has come to us. God has come to be with us and to fill us, to fill us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, to fill us with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. God has come to fill us with the peace of the Holy Spirit. God has come to fill us with the presence of the Holy Spirit. God has come to fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Hovering over the waters of creation, bouncing off the gopher wood of the ark, going bam off the ram that God provided on Mount Moriah, from the flames of the burning bush to the flames of the fiery furnace, dancing through the parted waters of the Red Sea and, and even to the waters by the river of Babylon where the people lived in exile, into the manger, into the Jordan, into the lives of people who were hopeless and helpless, into Jerusalem, onto the cross, into the tomb, out of the tomb, up into heaven, and there on Pentecost, descending on them like tongues of fire, the Spirit of God came into the lives of disciples. The Spirit of God came into the heart of disciples. The original apostles were there. A great crowd of people from all over the world was there. Today on a Pentecost some 2,000 years later, we believe God wants to make that same shot. God wants the Holy Spirit to, to come right into our hearts, to your heart, to my heart. The Spirit of God who has been active and everywhere from the very beginning of creation wants to come into your heart and to be active in every way, in every situation, in every moment of your life. The Spirit of God wants to fill your life forever and for always. God wants to make your heart His home. 
I hope and pray that you will receive this great gift in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.